Okay, so if you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to have some fun with Legos this afternoon. One of the goals of uh, the Joomla World Conference is to help build our community, bring us together, help us solve problems together, so that when we go back to our local communities, we can take that spirit and that knowledge and that enthusiasm and help grow um, the, our local communities and help grow our software together. So uh, this evening, we have uh, Marco Rillo, a Lego Serious Play facilitator with us. Uh, and Lego Serious Play is a fun program, even though it has serious in the in name. Uh, you should have a lot of fun this evening, but we'll be exploring some questions about Joomla, about our community, about how you interact with our community, and how, about how you contribute to our community. So um, I hope you have a lot of fun, and um, I hope you learn some things and share some things and hopefully get to know some new people. So with that, let's welcome Marco Rillo and his assistants. Thank you. Okay, so let's do first of all a quick introduction. I come from Estonia and I have been dealing with playing with Legos for the past 10 years. I have here a friend of mine, Ramesh. What is the session all about? It's about three things. It's about building, it's about playing, and it's about sharing. And we'll get the chance of doing these things immediately. So first of all, if you have not opened your plastic bags yet, then do it now. Assemble just four bricks and build with those four bricks a dog. When you're done, just raise your hand and raise your dog and show it to the others. What kind of dogs do you have over there? This dog here looks <laughs> like a small minifigure just on four feet. So, really lovely Good dog. Last. Yeah, there is another one. With a dog. Which looks like that. Oh, that's one. There's another dog here on all fours. Here's one. How does it look like? Wow, it's got real big eyes. Well, it hasn't slept for a while. Okay. Yeah. Good Amphibus. one. What other type has... Okay, and the last one, who wants to show theirs? So, how does it look like? Oh, it looks like one of the Star Trek movies. That's very good. So lovely. It's interesting, because when we looked at then these different dogs, there were some similar traits, but as a matter of fact, most of them were quite unique. And the interesting fact is that when you try to assemble a number of Lego bricks, then the possibilities are really endless. You can do one type, the other type, and different types. And here comes the next exercise. The next exercise is the following. Try to find a minifigure. And it looks something like this. If you have not put it up yet, then assemble the legs, the face, The legs, and everything the else. torso, the chest, the arms, and the head. OK. Got that? Excellent. Everybody has minifigure. Hands up. Yeah, good. Brilliant. So we are all with our minifigures. Here comes your next task. And the next task is the following. Now add a couple of things to your minifigure and introduce yourself to the other people in your table. The time starts ticking. One minute for building you, and then five minutes for introducing yourself to the other group members that, who you have in your table. Right. Ten more seconds to build. Okay, and time is up. No more building. Now the next thing is that you have five minutes in your group to introduce yourself to each other.
Can you tell them? <laughs> All right, 10 more seconds and then we're done with this exercise. Okay, so now that we have practiced both playing and building, we are practicing also the third skill, which is extremely necessary in this session. And this is called sharing. So how many people are regularly using Twitter? Please put your hands up. So how many of you are Twitter users? Brilliant. Now it's your chance to tweet about it. So we have put up here a particular set of Twitter hashtags. So in addition to JWC15, also add to this Another hashtag, LSP. LSP stands for Lego Serious Play. And post your tweet um, about what you built, because we are going to post several tweets during our discussions and buildings and play activities during the day today. So you can do that now, and you will have the chance to tweet also later afterwards. Please take a snap and tweet because we're going to dismantle this model very soon. So exactly. before we do that, take a snap, store it for posterity in Twitter. Okay. And if you forget, then each of the slides has the Twitter hashtag printed at the header. So you can remind yourself what is out there. Okay. Thank you very much for this kind of fun introduction. And why did we do this? And why do we ask you to think with your hands? Look at this uh, funny slide over there. There is a photograph which comes from the Natural History Museum of London, and it shows what a person would look like if all the body parts of a person would be exactly equal to the cortex areas in the brain that coordinates the spot. So as you can see, it's predominantly focused on hands. So 80-90% of our brain is connected to um, moving our hands, moving our fingers, doing something with them. So in essence, when you move your hands, it activates your neural circuits and it makes you think faster as well. So the next time you can see somebody who is frantically clicking their pen, don't think that this person has a problem, this person is really thinking. And also those bricks will help you think throughout the session today. And also, you can use those bricks later to think also in the future. Your hands know much more than your brains do. Absolutely. That's, and that's backed by research. It's one of the reasons why we have kids play a lot with hands, with clay, with crayons. It's very important. It's a very important part in our development. OK. Right? Ready. Now we're practicing the next task, which is collective building and practicing building together. So we'll give you a limited amount of time, and you have to build as a team, as a table together, a tower which would be able to fit the small minifigure at the very top. And you have only two minutes to do that. And we'll see who has the tallest tower by the end of this exercise. So remember, at, on top of the tower, we need a mini figure.
Okay. You're building more than one tower. Merge them, merge them. All right, just 15 more seconds and then you have to be ready. Be prepared for the countdown because once the time is over, you in, then you immediately must stop. And then we'll find who has the highest tower. Four, three, two, one, and time's up. So remove your hands and see how tall your tower is. Okay, here, Marco. Okay. Marco, we have a tower here. So, is there the winner? Yep, that's quite tall. We have a tower here, Marco. There is one here, there is one there. Marco. Yes. Here. Okay. So, it looks like this one is clearly the, the highest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stability is everything. We had big contenders, but obviously there is. This comes also very close. Absolutely. Well done, everybody. Well done, everybody. So you, you built your towers. N take quickly your photos you're going to have to dismantle these towers pretty soon and build something completely different with, with it. Okay. Take, take a snap, put it on Twitter. Absolutely. So what did we learn? What did we learn? We learned, first of all, definitely that it was fun. But what did we notice as well, especially those who was, were not building? We noticed that LEGO Series Play engages people. There are certainly traditional meetings out there where people are simply sitting back, relaxing, doing not much thinking, not much participating in discussions. But then there are also the meetings where people are present 100%. And that's exactly the experience that we are trying to create for you with the help of LEGO Series Play. We are trying to make you 100% engaged and part of the fun exercise that we have designed here for you. So that's the aim of this nice. toolkit. But there are also other reasons. Oh, more than one guy. Yeah, the other reason is that when you started working together, you started contributing and you started becoming essentially a co-owners of your work. So you do something together and you enjoy the contribution what you put into this. What else? So here comes the next task to you. First of all, start dismantling your existing towers. I know that you're very sorry for that, especially those teams who did so well, civil engineers and other non-civil <laughs> engineers who pre built their towers. But now please dismantle this, because now there is the chance to do something completely different. We need all the resources there are. Please do break them apart again. The next task is very simple. Individually, each and everyone separately. Now, please put together five brinks in completely random order. As you can see on this slide, there are a couple of photo examples here as well. Just take five bricks and put them together completely in a random manner. Well, you can have 30 seconds if you wish. Only five bricks. Hang on to that. Five bricks is fine. It's yours. All right. Most of you are done already. Keep those <laughs> five bricks as one element that you just built. And Ramesh and I are going to tell you about what to do with these buildings in a minute. Okay. 
and we're going to tell you about the use of symbols. You remember that when you were a small child, you played with everything that you had in your disposal. You could take a branch of a tree and make pretend that this is going to be your magic wand. Or just or, pebbles from the road. Or take something it. like this. Yeah. And you make them work for you. So essentially, whatever you prepare, whatever you produce, you can attribute a meaning to it and play with it. So when you look at this slide that you have in front of you, what can you see on this slide? Aeroplane? Aeroplane. Aeroplane. Okay. Who, can, who can see something else? Anyone else? What do you see? Seesaw. Seesaw. That's okay. a very good thing. Well, Scorpion. sorry? Bird. It okay. could be scorpion. Who else sees anything? Chocolate. He's so essentially, hungry. it depends on your imagination. What can you see on the picture? But what can I also attribute to this? So I built an airplane, and I made a photo of it, and I put it on the slide. I can also use plane as a symbol for something else. Plane can mean, for example, fast, because usually it goes somewhere. Plane can mean trips or holidays. Plane can mean something which is very much objective-oriented, focused. So it primarily depends on what kind of meaning do you attribute to something that you are building with your Lego bricks. For example, what are the adjectives you would associate with a plane? Crash. Crash. <laughs> Possibly. I thought that's a noun. Yeah. And the task is the following. This is the practice of showing that bricks can really mean anything we want. And this is the practice of showing creative thinking and use of symbolic language. So, the first person. So who is the first person in your table who starts explaining of what they built? So just lift up your hand. So who's the first person? You have selected the first person. And just a second. Just a second. Who's the second? Yeah. All right. Clockwise. You have chosen your first person. Now, here comes your exercise. The first person explains how this, what they built with the help of those five bricks, means my home. So the model, Within, the model you have built with your five bricks, can you use that model to describe your home? Only the first person. Exactly. So show this to others and show that you have built your home. And why is this your home? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Can we have a microphone here, please? Okay, and can we get the camera to this place so that we can see what your definition of your <laughs> building was? So show it to the camera and explain how this is your home. Okay, so. Oh, it's on, it's on. Okay, sir? And, and the way I view it is that I just choose the five different colors that I can pick from the tables. And I want to um, make my home that's as mixed characteristic as possible. So um, everybody in my family is welcome. They can be their own in my homes. So I have five colors, symbol and five colors. So five colors in your home represent your home. Very good. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. So that was the first exercise. Now, the next person. The second person on each table. Can you raise your hand, please? Clock okay. Clockwise to the first. Now, the second person, raise your hand and explain how what you built is content management system. Are you ready for that? So in 30 seconds, explain how you built a content management system.
Okay, so can you please explain to everybody how we're building is a content management system okay, so that so we can follow. Okay, so here's a content management system. Go ahead. So please, go uh, ahead. So here is my content management system. This is the front end of it. And this is the, this is the admin part. Uh, it's sitting on top of uh, front end. And uh, whatever change you will make in uh, from admin panel, it will get reflected on front end. Okay. Well done. There is front end, there is back end, there are all other kind of widgets. So good indeed, you, you were very good in building your content management system. Well done. Okay. So let's take the next exercise. The, the third, third person. person. The third person in your table has built, has just built the coolest computer ever. So tell how this is the coolest computer ever. Okay, my, my name is David from uh, Nairobi, Kenya. My coolest computer is uh, powered by a turbine. So it's a green computer, it uses wind. And then it, it, it is powered to a uh, to, uh, to, to the ground, so it, it benefits everybody who, who accesses the ground and stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Brilliant. So wind-powered computer. Wind-powered. Excellent. You were really good in building this kind of computer. It, it was really well prepared from your side. So thank you. So now we have the third exercise. Are you ready? The fourth, fourth. person, sorry, fourth person. Now the fourth person has built an interesting experiment. So tell us how your building is an interesting experiment. So how is this an interesting experiment that you have built? Experiment to travel in the time and in the, the, into the space because it has three different eyes pointing to different places. So you can travel to any place. Okay, so time traveling or place traveling machine all in one. It's very good. It's experiment. Very interesting experiment that you have built for us. Thank you very much Thank for your explanation. Thank you. Well, we have two more buildings to go through. So, building number five and person number five has built my dream software. <laughs> All right. Who is it here? Who's, who's doing this? So I guess uh, this this one is like uh, com, uh, a great uh, software because uh, software your dream. There are different parts coming out of this, and you can use this for, this part for something uh, like uh, like an e-commerce website. You can use this part as a financial kind of software. So and it's very colorful. You, like your ch ch children would be very happy to see that it's very colorful. So I guess yeah. Okay, very colorful dream, dream software. Okay, thank you very much as well. And now, finally, the last exercise. The sixth person can show how they have built Joomla. I have built the Joomla. This is my uh, view, okay, in the front end. This is my model in between, and this is a controller, and it works uh, dynamically to produce a great website. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Yay. So we have tumors as well. Very well done. So in essence, what we have experienced just, we have experienced how essentially we can give meaning to any object. And the good news, is that we have now finished the practice part. It also means that when you give a meaning to an object, the meaning matters more than the object. You Absolutely. See that? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what the object is. The meaning that you give to it is what matters. Indeed. Right? So we built the model first and the story came later. And yet your story is more important than the model. Absolutely. Yeah. And I started the statement with uh, the good news was that we are done with practice. As a matter of fact, there is no bad news. There is another, even better news. 
The better news is that now we can start using the BRICS in order to build the future of Joomla community. And this is what we are going to do. So our challenge is essentially use the BRICS and then build both individually and collectively how Joomla community is going to look like 10 years from now. There are certain house rules. First of all, the first rule is that when you don't know what to start building, then simply start building. There is a saying, don't hold a meeting with yourself. Do not hold a meeting with yourself, just start doing. Building. Your hands know it, don't worry. The second thing is that when you do the model, always talk about the model, describe your Lego model, explain it, ask questions about the model, don't ever talk about anything else. So only through models. Then, the third thing is that divide the tasks at your table. And there are three roles for this exercise that you need to have present in your table. First of all, each table should choose a facilitator. So this is somebody who leads the discussion and makes sure that everybody in your table participates actively and has a say. The second role is the role of a reporter. So somebody who has a Twitter account, somebody who has a smartphone and can take the photos of what you have built. So this person takes the photos and posts them to Twitter with these hashtags, JWC, LSP. And there is a third person who makes sure that you occasionally take a look at time, because time is going to be critical in those exercises. So everybody has all three roles covered. So the exercise is now the following. Bear with us for some time. There are two steps in this exercise. First step is individual building. So first of all, we don't start building immediately as a group, but we first do it individually. So use the bricks, use your imagination, and start thinking out with your hands what the future of Joomla community is going to look like. And the second task is going to be explaining it to your table so that everybody understands. At this stage, don't start discussing. Simply listen and make sure that you understand. Because otherwise, it's going to take too long. Listen and understand. You have to answer to the question, where will Joomla community be in 10 years from now? So 2025. Use one to three keywords and describe individually your future model and explain it to the rest of your group members. And when you do the building, each of your tables has a small white paper pad and you probably have some pens. We kindly ask you to write a couple of keywords next to your model when you have built it. So for example, Joomla in 10 years might be goal-focused and might be fun. So these are simply my examples, but you can come up with your examples. Use the white pad and write your stuff next to it. All right. Re ready? Ready? Any questions? Any questions? If not, then time starts ticking. Three, Three minutes, minutes for individual building. Three minutes for individual building and time starts counting down. Remember at this stage, just building, not talking, just building and writing down the keywords. Once you're done, take a pen and write your keywords next to your buildings. Okay, we have 30 more seconds for building, for finalizing your buildings. If you are unable to finish it all, don't worry. You can always explain with words. 
Okay, time is up. So no more building. And now the next task to you is that in your group, explain to the other members of your group what you have just built and how this represents your vision of Joomla community for the future, for 10 years from now. And everybody else has the chance to listen. So if maximum 10 minutes for this kind of deep discussion and listening to what the others were building and what do they have to say. Is somebody from your table ready to explain your individual model to the others? Okay, three more minutes to go, and then we'll see a couple of individual models. Okay, our time is almost up. Remember, first of all, first of all, listen what you were, uh, what was built. The second, take a photo and upload them to Twitter, JWC15, and the second hashtag is, is LSP, Lego Serious Play. LSP is the second hashtag. And in a second, we are going to go to a couple of tables and we are going to look at what was built. Okay. So, are we ready? Yes. So, can you please tell us what did you build, and we can look at in the detail. Okay. What I built is the Lego, uh, the Joomla, and the Joomla community. A lack of uh, a lot of person people. I used the little yellow blocks to depict the users, the community, the groups. You see the struts uh, binding the users and the community, and actually bridging differences and opinions, and building up to reach for the stars. OK, so the flag aims for the stars. Oh, uh, it's the pole that aims for the flags, and the flag is the pinnacle of the job. It's reaching the end result. OK, very good. Does anybody in your group want to present theirs? So? <laughs> no. <laughs> Can we point the camera until this time here? One minute. So, can you present yours as well? So, what did you build? Um, so, it's, uh, the, we're b boldly stepping out into the unknown because we don't know what technology is going to be like. Okay, so what, ha what is the unknown in uh, your model? It's the person kind of with the foot out in the middle of the air stepping forwards. Okay. Um, and uh, waving the flag of open source and volunteer driven communities. Right. Building bridges to other projects and building bridges to other technology um, projects. Um, and all the little eyes are looking at us rather than us looking out at the eyes. Okay. So, because we're doing all the cool stuff and people are looking at what we're doing and say, hey, I wish we could be like Joomla. And also, um, the figure can turn and change direction easily without having any kind of crises. So, if things change, we can change as a community. Um, and yeah, and still continue to function and continue to innovate. Okay, so interesting stuff. Several interesting metaphors. Stepping into unknown, but when we step into unknown, we can circle around and find the direction. Yeah. Then building bridges to the other systems and others looking at us, looking for lead. Yeah. Okay, very much, very very interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, and we would like you to work on the next task. So far, we looked at individual views on how the future is going to look like. But now you would need to gather the different perspectives of the individuals sitting in your table into one coherent story. So 
The first suggestion, therefore, is that if your models are apart, try to put them in, in the, into the center of your table so that they would be closely placed together. Then the second thing, try to come up with a joint story of your table and joint story of your, of your team. And write down the most important. And try to be precise in doing so. So try to really come up with, we shall, and then tell us what you are going to do as a team in order to really make it a reality. So these are the rules. And those we shalls should be maximum three. No more than three. Can be one, can be two, can be, uh, but no more than three. Then what else? Once your story is in place, do the same kind of thing. Use a sheet of paper and write with as clear handwriting as possible what is your we shall. So, what is your we shall that you will do jointly in order to achieve this vision that you have just set for yourself? And we're going to go through two phases in this building as well. First of all, building this joint vision, and the second one, putting down it into an action plan. So what are the we shalls that everybody in your table is going to contribute to? So ten, 20 minutes starts ticking. Unfortunately, this clock is not working, so try to follow your 20 minutes starting from now. Now. Story. the story is as good as the model. <laughs> it's very democratic, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, once you are about to finalize your joint story, try to now come up with we shall. So what is it that you as a team are going to do? So we shall. Remember, once you're about to done, then upload your we shalls, together your, with your models, also to Twitter. Hashtag JWC15 and hashtag LSP, Legacy Risk Play. OK, are all the stories told? Yeah. 30 more seconds to go, and then we start listening to the stories. So who of you is going to talk about what your vision of the future is going to be and what are your commitments that you take as a team? All right. Um, can people see our model? Or? Okay, so we, we thought about a lot of different things and we had a lot of different ideas in our own individual models and it kind of came together as this. Um, we have, um, this kind of represents the time of the next 10 years. Um, and, and we want to start on a very solid base. Uh, so we have a very big solid base that we have right now and then we want to grow and first um, a little bit and then eventually uh, during the years really start increasing our growth. And that's why the steps get bigger and bigger. <clears throat> we want to build on top of the solid ground and of, uh, on top of transparency. So this bottom thing here means that it should, everything should be built and, and grow from transparency in the community. And then. We uh, have uh, different people represented on the way up. Um, uh, here we have somebody helping somebody on board because we think that's very important that we can, we can help um, other people get on board uh, into the community and help all together uh, contributing, yes? 
And as, you, as we go up, we get higher and higher, and at the end, we have put a little wing or a little motor on, on the end of this guy, and he, can, he is ready to take off uh, and uh, with a raised flag at the top, uh, ready to take off and, and help maybe even more people join the, the community. Anything I forgot? So uh, these are the Internet of Things, which we have connected. So I think we shall, after 10 years, we shall be developing a lot of Internet of Things. And then this is the heart of websites. And then uh, this is, we will be building a bigger community so that we help each other and, you know, share lots of information and contribute more. Okay. All right. Are there some particular things that you can also do immediately? So we shall do something now. Um, now. Okay. But we, maybe we could contribute more to open source, which we haven't started yet. I okay. think we'll be looking forward to that very soon. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks. So there is another table behind there. Who wants to have a presentation? <laughs> so uh, our team, we, uh, it's kind of a graph. And if you look at it from the top down, you actually see a line graph. And from the bottom up, you see a mountain. This is where we are. And the story is we're going to you know, keep doing milestones to get better and get further and further down the path as a community and involve community members each way in the flags of the milestones. And then the final goal 10 years from now is the unknown. We don't know where it's going to be, and our, because um, we, it's going to be something different that we don't know. And our three we shalls are we shall um, work together, we shall introduce new features, and we shall embrace the unknown because any of us, what we imagine in 10 years from now, it won't be that. It's going to be something even better. So. All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. So this is our imagination of the Joomla community. Uh, it starts uh, focused on community. We want to be inclusive of everybody. You'll see a lot of people on here doing a lot of different things. And so we want to create opportunities for people to be involved in the community, uh, break down any barriers to people for people uh, becoming involved in the community and contributing and, and uh, being part of the Joomla community. Uh, we also want to add new features. Um, I think other people have mentioned that, but we want to add new features and We'll probably add a few new bugs too, but uh, <laughs> definitely some new features <laughs> will make it in there. Um, yeah, there's a strong community there. And we also want to build bridges to other open source communities. We're all about Joomla, but we're also all about open source. So we want to build bridges and collaborate with other uh, open source communities, help us learn, to help them learn, and to make us all better. And um, we're also pretty sure there's lasers involved. <laughs> okay, so good. Lasers, communities, bridges, all very important stuff. So who else wants to add something that has not been said yet? So let's go behind there. Uh, we just uh, built a uh, Zoomla as a, yeah. So Zoomla as a, the primary focus here, which is like a Zoomla city. And uh, we try to build more like a 10 blocks, which is a 10 years building a Zoomla kind of a temp, temple structure, a tower where the people uh, with hands uh, uh, all active and uh, with achieving on, on top of the tower. And we try to uh, add other things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, and there's also a fun element where an alien ship has come to also visit and uh, see the Zoomla. So there's a lot of creativity and color around that. So the, the next part of Zoomla would be more creative and uh, colorful and inclusive and uh, it will be more, uh, I mean, the scalable. All right, you have plenty of different things in this Joomla city. So can you show us a l around a little bit? So what kind of things are there in this, in this city? You know, there, there is, you know, 10 layers. It is, uh, you know, it means that, you know, after 10 years where the Joomla community will be. This is called Joomla community. Joomla will be, you know, number one position in that type. And, you know, as uh, it told, you know, there is one vehicle here. This, uh, you know, th through that vehicle, you know, aliens will come and, you know, learn learn the Joomla, so after 10 years, <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, you know, concept is something like that. Okay, yes. Uh, Joe, but uh, other CMS, CMS are still uh, struggling uh, with this one, uh, Joomla is still at top. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, and you said that this one uh, was a temple of Joomla, yeah, this or, is a temple. so what does it, it says, mean? You can look from uh, two sides. So the temple, uh, the Joomla, yeah. So what is the temple? So the temple is of wisdom, so it's, it's 
not like religious as such. It's, it means to that there's a lot of wisdom going in, in, in building a Zoomla platform. Absolutely. So that's a met metaphor. Very interesting. So, large city here. So, uh, this is our team. And uh, as you can all see, uh, these are different individuals at different levels. We have the leadership here, right from the bottom, from the grassroots. All of them have small successes. And we believe all these successes are going to bring Jumla to the top success. Small successes contributed. We are getting Jumla at the top. And we have a person here which, which shows sacrifice and commitment. Someone sacrifices himself for the sake of Jumla. And there is still growth. So small successes from different communities and the whole success of Jumla. So, and we are still going ahead. What we have here is flexibility, very hard work and commitment. We have security <coughs> here protecting us from the outside world and um, anything that could harm us. And uh, we've got a mountain here that we, sh we want to um, go on top of in the next 10 years. Um, we're extensible as well. And here we're keeping watchful eyes for changes that may come. And in the future, we plan to rocket to the future, too. <laughs> yeah, we have a spaceship here to rocket ourselves. Um, and we did commit to some things. Um, we said we shall accept volunteers of all skill sets. We shall follow the rules of security. We, sh we shall share our knowledge op openly. And we shall be receptive to feedback. And we shall keep it fun. So what we have here is that we have a very strong product. Uh, and the idea is that if we focus on building a really strong product, the community will evolve and revolve around it. So we need to focus on the product as well as the community, and they go hand in hand, and uh, we need to focus on building a really great product is what I feel. And that's what we shall do. That's it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So at this stage, I guess that it's worthwhile that everybody gives everybody a big hand of applause because you have done great. <laughs> so, before we finish, there are a couple of things that we would still like to stress. So, first of all, this information that was created by these discussions, don't leave it only to this room and your own small group of five or six people. Try to share it and try to use the examples of the models that you built in the next discussions over the next couple of days that you're here together, as well as in the future when you're working together as a community. We use the bricks as props today to create metaphors and make meaning out of what we see. Going forward, it shouldn't be necessary at all to use props. I think if you want to understand the world better, it's best understood through stories and metaphors. Um, I'm an engineer, and I've been in IT for 35 years now. And I find among engineering people, developers, a very low propensity to use stories and metaphors. That's very sad, because the rest of human beings understand it only that way, hmm. right? And by, by we sticking to our engineering jargon and terminology, we actually alienating ourselves from the rest of the human race and becoming as antisocial as we can. Right? So my uh, suggestion to you is at the end of this exercise, try and use the power of metaphors and stories when you have something to describe at work, when you have something to describe in your community, when you have something to say to your team, try and think of it metaphor or a story. It works beautifully every single time. And when developers and engineers do it, you surprise the hell out of the world. <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> and you stand out in a crowd. So do try this. Okay? Thank you very much. We had fun. Yes, I and we have you too. Well. Thank you. That was very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marco. I think this is a lot of, did everybody have fun? Did everybody, how many people met somebody that they had not met before tonight? I did. I met like five new people that I'd never met before. Yeah, that's good. This is what we want in our community. We have an enormous community and these are great events. Thank you, Marco, and your team for helping to introduce us to other members of our community and to help us explore how we work and collaborate in Joomla. 
Um, so I hope you guys had a good time, and hopefully we learned some things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.